Why live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life? Welcome to the Abundant Life Program with Ashley and Carly Terradez. Hello and welcome to the Abundant Life Program. We're so glad you joined us here in the lounge. My name is Ashley Terradez and this is my awesome wife, Carly. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> We're so glad you're with us today. We've got a great program for you lined mm-hmm. up, praise God. We've been looking at uh, Philippians and some life lessons in Philippians that are gonna help you live the abundant life, praise God. And um, today we're excited. We've got mm-hmm. uh, we've got a great show for you. Uh, we're excited that you're with us. But I wanna tell you about a few things, first of all. Uh, first of all, you can go to our website. It's teradesministries.com. Please go over there. And in fact, if you go to our website today, we're actually giving Carly's card away. This is a confession card, all the verses about who you are in Christ. This will really bless you. This is powerful. You put your name on it and you confess these uh, verses over yourself. And they, I'm telling you, we've had testimonies from all over the world have. of people getting people set free healing, and healed from this mm-hmm. card. So go to our website, terradesministries.com. It's right there on the homepage and we'll send one of these to you as our gift. Absolutely Praise free. the Lord. And then also I want to tell you about Carla's uh, teaching series. This is a two-part CD called Giant Killers. And um, this is a really great uh, series, basically talking about, you know, when the Israelites went into the promised land, God said, you know, I've given you the promised land, but by the way, there's some giants there. So even though God has given us promises, promises of, of healing, promises of prosperity and all these things, there's still some giants for us to overcome. Praise God. And there's still giants in the land and we need to overcome them. Now, the good news is it's a fixed battle. Amen. It's a fixed battle, praise the God. The outcome's already been decided. The outcome's already decided. Yes. But praise God, there's still some giants to kill. So if you've got giants in your life you want to kill, this will really help you. This is Giant Killers, two-part CD set available on our website. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. So today we're looking at Philippians. We're still in chapter one. And in the last uh, few programs, uh, we've been in chapter one. This is the, the last uh, session in chapter one of uh, Philippians. And uh, we, this is Philippians chapter one, verse 28. And this is Paul's talking. He says, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to your salvation and that of God. So this is entitled, Do Not Be Afraid. Or no fear. I think it's no, fear. I mean, no fear. There's only t-shirts. No fear. Amen. You know, so no fear. Do not be afraid. Mm-hmm. And uh, Paul is really exalting us here. Don't be afraid. And uh, do not be afraid. Praise God. Do not be terrified in any way. Some translations say, do not let fear uh, rule you. Some translations say, uh, do not be afraid of anything. And then in the New King James, what we read here, it says, do not be in any way terrified, praise God. Mm. So fear is a powerful thing, eh? It is. And you know, I like to think of the acronym. I think it's, I don't know where we've got this from, okay. but I heard it and it's been going around for a long time. But fear is false evidence appearing real. Amen. That's good. False evidence and appearing real. It's, it's true. You know, there are a lot of things in life that cause us to be moved at a heart level or terrified by fear. Mm-hmm that we have authority over as believers in Christ. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it says in, um, there's, there's so many scriptures, actually, I think it's like over 300 times it says in the scriptures, do not be afraid. Do not be a- I think it's one for every day of the week, I heard. Well, no, oh, maybe. Yeah, one for every day of the year. There's a lot, lot of, of times. Week. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And, you know, the reason that that's repeated so many times in the scriptures is because we have, well, the opportunity to be afraid, <laughs> right? And I think... We don't realize sometimes that fear, it's like he's opening the doorway to the enemy in our life. Mm-hmm. We, this is our signature, our signature scripture really for, for, the, for whole, the whole Abundant Life program, but it's John 10.10. 10. Right. It says it's the enemy that comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but it's Jesus that comes to give us life and life abundantly. Amen. Learning to spot fear in our life and deal with it is a, it goes a long way to living in the, in the life of abundance that Jesus has called us to. You know, because when we, when we, fear and faith are like polar opposites. Yeah. You know, it, when, when a Peter stepped out of the boat and walked on the water, the whole time he kept his eyes focused on Jesus, he didn't sink. He kept looking at Jesus, looking at Jesus, looking at Jesus, and he walked along the top of the water. Mm-hmm. No other man has done that, right? right? Other than Jesus, right? No other man has done that. And the whole time he kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked on the water. But the minute he started looking around him at the wind and the waves. He started to get into fear. And that's the point at which he started to sink. And, you know, there's an important lesson in that passage for us that when we keep our eyes, our attention, focus on the answer, which is Jesus, it doesn't matter what storms are raging around us. We can walk above the circumstances. Mm-hmm. It says in the scriptures that we are above the circumstances and not beneath them. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to get... We, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, people would, people would say, you know, how, how are you doing? Oh, oh I'm okay, oh, you know, under the circumstances. Right. What are we doing under the circumstances? The scripture says that we are above the circumstances and not beneath them. Amen. 
But if we let ourselves entertain fear, we'll find ourselves you know, beneath the wind and the waves mm -hmm. starting to sink. So false evidence appearing real. And fear is a, is a powerful force in, a, in, our, in, our, in our lives today. You know, it, many times our decisions are driven, are made based on fear rather than faith. We cannot be in fear and faith at the same time. So if we, want to op if we want to access all the promises of God that grace has provided, we do that through faith, we cannot operate in fear and faith at the same time. Amen. It's really important that we understand that we can live outside of fear and it doesn't have to control us. Amen. And the thing is with fear, fear is actually paralyzing. It's amazing it how when you let fear in and you start meditating on fear, I'm telling you, it will can paralyze you. And I'm mm. thinking one time when, when we was a, I was a, a youth pastor at a church and I was passing the church late at night, I was just driving home. And I don't know, it was 10, 11 o'clock at night, it was late. And I was driving past the church and I noticed that the side door of the church was ajar. It was open a little bit. And I was like, that's strange. So I pulled the car over into the parking lot and I thought, I better check this out. You, you thought know? somebody so was in there I thought someone could be in there. So I went into the church and the, the door was open. But the light switch for the auditorium was right at the other side of the auditorium. So I had to walk across this auditorium. Probably in the a, dark. Probably a 300 seat auditorium <laughs> in the dark, thinking there could be someone inside the church building. You know, they, this looks like a break-in. So there could be someone inside this church building. So I'm walking through the church building. Didn't have cell phones back then. I couldn't have my, didn't have my flashlight, you know, right. my cell phone. So it's completely dark. I'm, I'm, look, I'm going through the auditorium in the pitch black, thinking there could be someone around here anywhere. And the light switch was over the other side. So as I'm going for the light switch, I had to pass by the pastor's office. And his door was open. And as I passed by the pastor's office, I saw behind the door, like someone stood behind the door like with their back against the door, like hiding from me from behind mm -hmm. the door. And I saw it through the crack in the door. And I was just fear. I'd like to say, you know, especially to the men watching there, I, had, I was so bold. I had no fear. Yeah, I was, you're I a man of I, faith and power. Oh, I tell you what, I was. <laughs> I mean, I could just go into fear. I'm just tell you, I froze and physically, par I was paralysed, mm. and I let that fear. And all of a sudden, I was like, all the emotions. This guy could have a weapon. This guy. I mean, this guy. Your could imagination kill me. started. To go My imagination wild. went crazy, and before I know it, I was in full blown fear. To the point I was paralysed. I couldn't move. I was like literally shaking, standing there. I couldn't move. Like, what am I going to do? And then finally, I mustered up the courage to like, I'm going to have to do something about this. You know, it's like, I'm going to have to go for this. So I, I reached over and, and turned the light on and then, and then pulled the door back so I could see who was behind it. And um, behind the door was the, uh, you know, uh, behind the office door was the pastor's robe. He had his robe oh, hanging, no. hanging up behind the door. He used to do weddings and funerals and that, had this big long robe. And his robe was hanging up behind the door and his big coat as well was there. Wow. And with them combined with the darkness, it did look like a person. Seriously, yeah. you would have felt for it as well. It looked like a person behind the door. You've been but watching too many movies. There was no person behind the door, praise God. It was just his, his coat and his robe. Oh but I just wanted to know, when you let fear in, now that was false evidence appearing real, right? Fear. That wasn't real. There was no real danger there. You know, the door didn't quite close when the pastor left, and that's why it came open a bit. There was no one robbing the, robbing the church or anything. There was no one going to attack me. But in that moment, I thought I was going to have to get into a fight. I thought I was going to get attacked. And that fear... Uh, right. come upon me and I'm telling you so often we have to be careful if we let fear in I'm telling you before you know it it can paralyze you fear will paralyze you faith will motivate you and move you fear will paralyze mm. you and hold you back and mm -hmm. that's a bit of a silly example but you know when you've been in fear you've you've heard something in the middle of the night and all of a sudden <clears throat> everything stops it's like your heart starts beating mm -hmm. everything stops and it's and it can paralyze you fear can paralyze you whereas faith moves you and motivates you praise God mm -hmm. and the devil wants to use fear to stop you doing things. The devil wants to use fear to stop you believing God. The devil wants to use fear to get you in, in, into a place where you're retreating and you're scared and you're not, you know what, you don't want to go forward anymore. And it can really mess up the, the, your, your motivations. It can really mess up your day-to-day -day living if you let yeah, fear in. Yeah, it sure can. But this is what the Lord says about it. This is in 1 John 4, 18. It says, um, there is no fear in love, uh -huh. but perfect love casts out Amen. fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. So, you know, the Lord does ne will never use fear to lead us or guide us or punish us. Amen. He is not a God of fear. It's the enemy that brings fear into, into our hearts. And, you know, and part of this as well is our own imagination, our mm -hmm. vain imagination. Look, this is in uh, 2 Corinthians 10. Let me just turn here a second. Um, this is a powerful scripture. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. It says, um, actually, we'll start with verse three. It says, for we walk not, um, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Mm. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, not fleshly, not of, the, not of our five senses, 
But they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of, an, of arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And here's the thing. This is talking about our thought life. Mm -hmm. Whatever we think upon, our feelings will follow our yeah. thoughts. You know, God has not given us first. I think it's a, I've got that one noted down. Second Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound Amen. mind. We are not called to be people of fear. Amen. Perfect love casts out fear. Yep. But if we let it, our imagination will take us places that we don't want to go. And then our feelings will follow our thoughts. Mm -hmm. I remember, um, you know, if, if, you, if you've ever watched a scary movie... Right. I don't, Before, I don't like, right. I don't like scary movies. But, but, so anything jumpy. You don't like it. I don't want anything. It's Amen. Like, you know, like, because fear involves torment. But before I was born again, I watched a lot of scary movies that I wish I hadn't now. Right. Horror but movies are bad it's news. Bad. And if you're, if you're someone that's dealing with a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety in your life, think back to that. There, there's usually a way that that's entered into your heart in the first place. And you know, whatever you, um, whatever you fill your heart with, that's what's going to come out. Out of mm -hmm. the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, yeah. right? And so if, if, you, if you feed yourself by watching a lot of these scary movies, things that are driven by fear and adrenaline, you know, that's not good. That, that settles somewhere in our hearts. And, you know, in our logical brain, we'll think, well, those things don't affect me. I know it's just a movie. Well, let me ask you this. If you're sitting there watching a scary movie and you've got the pillow, you know, halfway up your face, you know, you're just kind of peeking <laughs> out... You know that the people on the screen are actors. You know that no one really died in the making of that movie. They're going to go home to their wives and their families and they're all going to be happy. They get paid very well. But there's a part of you while you're watching it that starts to relate to the actors in those scenes. You start to imagine yourself, mm -hmm. well, what if that was me? What if I was in that situation? What if those things were really happening to me? And, you know, you, or it, same with sad movies. Maybe you watch sad movies. You know, no one really died, but you, you start oh, to relate. Yeah. You start to uh, put yourself in the position of those actors. And the emotions follow, don't I'm they? I'm not very good at sad movies, unfortunately. My You're kids, a crier. In fact, when we're in the cinema and so, there's a sad scene on, all, all three of my kids will lean forward and look to, to, see, to, if he's see, blubbering. to see if I'm crying. I, <laughs> I have been known to cry during a trailer of a movie. You know, like a two-minute trailer. That's oh how goodness. bad I am with sad he's a, movies. Because he's a sensitive soul. My emotions, well, I go there with the people and I get so involved yeah, with the you people. Start to and then when they die or something sad happens, it's scary just thinking about it. Oh my, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hold it together. Hold so it together. So your emotions follow. They do. So when you think on these things, your emotions follow. And that's yeah. why fear can be so dangerous because, you know, Job puts it this way. This is Job uh, chapter 3, verse 25. Job says, For the thing which I greatly feared the most has come upon me. And that which I was afraid of has, has come unto me. You know what? If you if you meditate on something enough and think about what if this happens, what if that happens, what if this happens, you can start experiencing those emotional fears. And it can become very real. And then before you know it, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. And so that, um, you know, and you your, your feelings will follow whatever you're thinking upon. Mm hmm Right? So, you know, you finish watching the scary movie, it's time to go to bed, then what happens? You're going to look under the bed. Right? For the for the, you're going to look under the bed for the boogie monster. To the, see boogie the, the boogie monster. You're going to start turning the lights on. <laughs> you know, closing the curtains, checking inside the wardrobes. You know, you're gonna, your, your actions are going to follow your feelings. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be people that live out of our feelings because our feelings go up and down all the time and mm -hmm. they're not stable. And that's where fear, it's like, it's like the open doorway to the things of the enemy operating in our life. They start out in places where it's just our imagination. Mm -hmm. But we start imagining things in the negative and that opens the door. And like it says in Job, it's almost like an invitation. Come on in, enemy, and have a field day with yep. me. You know, but the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Mm. And if we want to be people of faith and power and, and be happy and successful in every area of our life, we want to be people of faith and power, Amen. right? But you can't walk in faith and fear at the same time. Amen. So some of, the, some, of, some of the fear that's operating in our life, um, people say, well, it's, it's, it's all the enemy. Well, sure, you know, some things could be down to the enemy. But what things are we doing in the natural that could actually be fostering that environment within our own hearts? Right, that's good. I mean, one example I'm thinking of is like fear of lack. You know, mm -hmm. and I've had this before where you start to think you're going to run out. I'm going to run out of money. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to pay the mortgage. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do that. And that fear of lack can get, and you can start thinking about that. 
And you have to watch what you're meditating on. Like Carly said, your thoughts are going to lead your feelings. And if you start thinking on these things enough, well, I'm going to run out. This isn't going to work. This isn't going to work out. And you start you start having those thoughts. And you start meditating on those things. I'm telling you, before long, you can start to really feel it on the inside and, and it can start con consuming you. And you can start to have real fear about these things. You need to look at things and say, okay, what is the actual truth? What's the truth in this situation? And the truth is the Word of God, right? So the first thing to do is go back to the Word of God and say, what does God say about this situation? Wherever the situation is, whether you're battling for, for healing, you have fear about not being healed. You know, last program we looked at um, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And you know what? That's If you can get rid of that fear of like, you know what? Even the absolute worst case scenario is I go home to be with Jesus early. Now that's never God's will. God never sends people home early. We, be like, we, don't, we believe God wants everyone to live a, a long, full life. Praise God. But you know what? Even if you lose the battle that you're facing and you die. The worst case, you die. You know what? You're going to get to be with Jesus. So mm -hmm. get rid of that fear. Get rid of any irrational fear. What if, you know, you run out? Well, the Word of God says he's going to provide all your needs. The Word of God says, I've never seen the righteous man begging for bread. So you won't run out. But even if you do run out, what's actually going to happen? You know, you know start eyeballing these fears. Yeah, it's powerful. Start eyeballing these fears. So what does it actually look like? Because what the devil does, it's all smoke and mirrors. And it's type of like, he'll make you believe something that isn't even real. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you'll start thinking things are going to happen and they're not even going to happen. And even if they did happen, they're not as bad as, you know, I remember when I was a kid at school, someone said, uh, so-and-so, you know, Johnny Jones, whatever his name was, he wants to fight you after school because I'd said something, I'd done something. Oh. Then and all the rest of the day you're thinking about he it, He was right? like three grades ahead of me, uh -oh. you know, above me type of thing. And I'm in I'm elementary school and all they keep saying is, is whatever his name was, Big Johnny or whatever, he's going to he's gonna fight you after school. He's going to kill you after school. And all day, I was in fear. I was like, oh no, not, not Johnny Jones. Jones, he's going to kill me. What's going to happen? And I was so scared all day. And the anticipation, it was the longest day of school in my life. Finally, the school bell went at three o'clock and it was time. I walked out into the playground, you know, out to the school gate. And here's like Johnny Jones, whatever his name was, coming towards me. And the fear, I'm telling you, I was so crippled with fear. I was like, this is terrible. He's much bigger than me and everything else. Anyway, he come over to me. He punched me one time in the side of the head and then walked off. And that was it. And it didn't even hurt that much. I was like, oh, is that it? That's not too bad. It didn't even hurt. But all day I've been so scared. It was the anticipation was, of it. The anticipation it was, worse. was much worse than the actual event happening. Yeah. And it's like most of the time the event doesn't even happen. When it yeah. happens, it's not that bad. So anyway, that's a silly example. But anyway, I'm just saying you can let fear start playing games with your emotions and start playing games with your imagination. Before you know it, it's bigger than it ever was anyway. That's right. And you escalate things and you magnify that fear. You know, in Psalms, it talks about magnify the Lord. You know, you can actually make, if you meditate on God and meditate on his promises and meditate on his love, you can actually make that bigger in your life. Yeah. Or you can meditate on fear and you can start meditating on the negative things, start ne uh, negative, negative things, meditating on negative yes. things. That's a tongue twister. Yeah. And before you know it, that fear can become all consuming and it will paralyze mm -hmm. you and it'll get to a point where you're terrified. That's what Paul's talking about here. Mm -hmm. Don't be terrified. You know, this is in 1 Peter 5. Uh, verse 8, it says, actually, let's start in verse 4. It says, casting your care upon him, upon Jesus, okay, um, for he cares for you. Verse 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. In verse 9, it says, resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. You know what? The devil does not have authority to come in and trample over our life. Amen. But the only weapons that he really has is fear and deception. Mm -hmm. If he, you see, he's not, he's not able to read our minds, contrary right. to popular belief. He's not, he's not able to do that, but he has been around a long time. And so he understands just by observing people where the potential is, right? right. He, he, gets, he knows how to spot a winner. Right. And he knows what believers have on the inside of them. Because he knows who Jesus is. Right. He knows who it is that lives on the inside of us. So the only power that he has, he can't even stop believers from becoming born again. Right. He can't stop us receiving Jesus. He can't stop us receiving healing. He can't stop us receiving the promises of God. But what he can do is he, conv he can convince us that we don't really have them. Mm. Or he can get us to doubt, did God really say? Will God really protect you? Does God really love you? Just like he did with Adam and Eve in the garden. Right. He's, he's roaming around seeking whom he may devour. Who's going to buy my lies, in right. other words? Who's going to buy my deception? Who's going to buy the fear? You know, because they're, they're, they're meditating on, on lies and truth. If we meditate on something that's not true, that'll have power just in the same way that if we meditate on the truth, that'll have power. Mm -hmm. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's what it says in Proverbs. 
But he says he's roaming around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You know, when we start to entertain the lies of the enemy, we're saying, come on in and devour me. Right. You see, the devil doesn't have permission to just come on in and eat us up. He has to say, hmm, who may I devour? It's like, may I have a cookie? No, you may not. He <laughs> may, has to have permission. May I devour you? No, no, right? So we can take ourselves off his menu. We don't have to be lion bait. We don't have to give in to the lies and the deceit. And there's one way that we can really conquer fear, and that's to know the truth really well. Mm-hmm. I remember talking to your sister, I think it was about this one time. She used to be a cashier in a bank when she first left school, right, one yeah. of her first jobs. Mm-hmm. And she said I to me... I asked her to bring her work home with her. Yeah, she wouldn't do that, huh? But, so she would, I said, if you want to bring some of your work home with you, but she wouldn't do that. No. Right. <laughs> but, you know, we've already read the scripture in 1 John 4, 18. It says, perfect loves cast out fear. The best way that we can cast out fear in our, in our heart and our minds, and, you know, especially if we're dealing with perpetual anxiety, which, you know, leads to depression and all kinds of things if, it, if it's not reined in is to focus on the truth. Amen. The truth is the antidote to the fear. Because mm-hmm. whatever we focus on gets bigger. Yeah. If we try not to be afraid, what happens? You get more afraid. You get yeah. more afraid yeah. because yeah. whatever you're focusing on so you replace on fear with lo- the love of God is what you're yes. saying. Meditate on the love of God. I've got here Psalm 118, verse 6. This is Psalm 118, great Psalm. Verse 6 says, The Lord is on my side and I will not fear. What can man do to me? You know, Amen. it's almost like the psalmist is saying, you know what, the Lord's on my side. I'm not going to fear because what can man do to me anyway? It's like right. he's rationing it out. Another great psalm, obviously, is Psalm 23. A great psalm, but breaking in here in uh, verse 4, it says, Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. This is a bad place. This is the valley of the shadow of death. This is If you're going to be afraid, this is a good place to be afraid, in the valley of the shadow of death. It's justifiable fear. It's not a great name for a valley. I'm going to go through the valley, and it's, it's called a, the valley of death. It's not, a, it's not like a holiday destination. No, it's no. not like a Pleasantville uh, or whatever. But anyway, so he said, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Because, you know, the psalmist is saying, God's with me. I will fear no evil. And he says, your rod and your staff, they come for me. You know, when we... When we focus on God's love, how much he loves us, the truth is nothing can separate us from the love of God. Yeah. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. You start meditating on those things, you start meditating on how much God loves you, praise God, and all of a sudden that fear will go. That fear of lack, that fear mm. of defeat, maybe that fear of rejection. If you've got a fear of rejection, everyone's going to reject me. Well, God accepts you. Yeah. Who cares about everyone else? God Amen. accepts you. You meditate on God Almighty, the creator of the universe, accepts you, then you haven't got to worry about other people not accepting you. Praise God. What about fear of lack? Or what if I run out? You know what? God owns the cattle on a thousand mm. hills. He, I mean, he, you know what I mean? God owns everything. He's going to provide for you. You don't have to have a fear of lack. And whatever that fear is, you know what? Look at that fear and say, you know what? No, this, and get some promises. Get some promises from the word of God. Get some on. scriptures to stand on. Get some promises of the word of God. And say, you know what? Yeah. I'm not going to fear because God loves me. So the best antidote to overcoming fear is to be obsessed with the truth. Amen. And, and just finishing my story here. Sorry, I interrupted That's the story. Right. Carry on. My um, sister is a banker. She was, yeah, she yes. was a cashier in a bank. Yeah. You know, and, and here's the thing. There was, there was fraudulent notes that mm-hmm. would come out constantly. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the criminals would always come up with new clever ways to make the banknotes, the fake banknotes, look more realistic. And there was no way that they could ever keep up with the, the new forgeries that were coming out. Mm-hmm. So instead of trying to, be, to get, get, a, get familiar with all of the different up-and-coming forgeries, they just focused on the truth. They focused on a genuine note. Mm-hmm. They had them study out the genuine article to the point where they knew the genuine article, the genuine note so well that any new forgery that came out, they could tell it instantly what was the truth and what was a lie. Yep. Man, I remember Hannah being four years old and mm-hmm. we were playing that game, Truth and Lies. Oh, yeah. So I was, I was ten, saying to Hannah, I said, you know, daughter, I said, Hannah, you know, uh, what's real and what's fake? What's, what's really known? We're talking about different things, you know. And I said to her, so I thought I'd spring this on her. I said to her, Hannah, I said, is the devil real or is he fake? And you could see she was thinking about this. She was in the back of the car, I was driving. She was thinking, she was looking around. I thought, I've got her here. You know, what's she going to say now? <laughs> and she came out with something so profound. I tell you what, the body of Christ would, would do well to, to, uh, to uh, believe this, praise God. I said to her, is the devil real or fake? And she said to me, Dad, she said, the devil is real, but his weapons are fake. And I thought, you know what? That is yeah. so true. The devil is real. He is roaming around like a, ro- a roaring lion. But Jesus has stripped him of all power. He has no power. If you're born again today, the devil has no power over you. The only power he has over you is deception. And he will deceive you into thinking he's got power. He will deceive you into fearing. And then he's got power over you. Right. But you know what? We have total power over the devil. Mm-hmm. His weapons are gone. Jesus stripped him of his weapons, stripped him of his power. And now, praise God, all he's got is deception. So when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Mm. And when you know the truth, 
Praise God, the devil has got nothing on you anymore. He can't deceive you anymore. That's why it's so important to know the truth, so important to get in the word of God, so important to meditate on God's promises, praise God, and meditate on God's love for you. God loves you and you don't have to fear anymore. Amen. Amen. I honestly think the biggest battle we have is not with the devil. Right. It's with our own thoughts. Yep. You know, Amen. the battles between our own ears. And that's where it says in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5, you know, taking, taking captive every thought to the Amen. obedience of Christ. I like to look at it this way. We measure, we measure up every thought to the John 10.10 10 rule. So John 10.10 10 says it's the enemy that comes to kill, steal and destroy, but it's Jesus that comes to give us life and life more abundantly. So as that thought comes, we can, we can get out of John 10.10, 10, take it captive. We're going to put it in the prison of John 10.10, 10, right? right? Now, now, now prisoner thought, now we've taken you captive. We've isolated you. Where did, where was you where's your source? Right. You know, are you, are you a good thought? from God, good thoughts come from God. Are you a bad thought? You know, have you come to kill, steal and destroy? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, that, that, could, that could come from the enemy or are you just ugly? Good, <laughs> the bad and the ugly, you know? Have you come from my flesh? Are you just right. coming from my stinking thinking in my mind that hasn't been renewed yet to the, to the word of God? Mm -hmm. And once we isolate those thoughts and take those captives, we can decide whether we want to meditate on them, whether we want to dwell on them. Right. And if they're bad, we can, we, can, we can toss them out and replace them with the truth, with the scripture like you're mentioning. Mm. Stand on the truth of God's word. You know, every time that Jesus rebuked the enemy, it was with the word of God. Amen. And we can do the same thing. Amen. Remember, this is just to help you live the abundant life. This is God. Mm -hmm. God loves you. This isn't any type of things we tell you to do because, you know, you've got to do this to get God's approval. God loves you. He's not, his love for you cannot get any stronger for you. But this is going to help you receive all what God's got for you. Praise Amen. God. So we want to help you live the abundant life. We want to help you live the life that, that Jesus paid for. Praise God. And if you have fear in your life, it's going to paralyze you. And it's not going to, you're not going to be able to step out in faith. Praise God. So get rid of fear. Start meditating on how much God loves you. Start meditating on his promises for you. Praise God. And that would really bless you. In fact, Carly's card I spoke about at the beginning of the show. That would really help you. These are scriptures here. They're going to help you get over fear. Praise God. Because mm. it, it, it focuses you on the love of God. Amen. Amen. Let's Praise pray for God. The people. Go ahead. Yeah, thank Father you, God, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters here. And we take authority over fear from Amen. operating in our life right now. Amen. We cast out fear because perfect love casts out fear. And we say mm. we are people of faith and power. We mm. do not have a spirit of fear, but we have a power and love and a sound mind. Lord, we place your word above mm. the, the things that we've been fearing in our, in our lives, in our hearts and our minds. And we take captive our thoughts. We take authority over our thought life right now in Jesus' name. Mm. And I just speak the peace that surpasses all understanding to fill your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Well, thanks for watching. We'll be back very shortly with another program. Praise God. But until then, why live a normal life when you can live the abundant life? We'll see you next time. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website, teradesministries.com. Hey, we want to thank the partners of Teradez Ministries. You know what? If you're a partner with this ministry, you're enabling us to spread the gospel literally around the world. We have people giving testimonies from all over the world about how they've been set free by these programs and by this teaching. So we want to thank you if you're a partner with us. If you're not a partner with us, we'd love to invite you to partner with us. You know what? Partners catch more fish. Amen. You know what? When Jesus told them the disciples to cast the net over the other side, praise God, they caught so many fish, they had to call partners to help receive it. We believe we have the spirit of increase on in this ministry. We've got a big vision and we need some partners to help us with that. So we believe God's going to give seed to sowers. So if you want to partner with us, go to teradesministries.com forward slash give and you can find out how you can partner with us today. We'd love for you to join us. Coming up next on the Abundant Life Program. And you know what? I've been through all sorts of situations where it's not fair, it wasn't right. And you know what? We can easily get, you know, woe with me. Oh, this isn't fair. This isn't right. You know what? Meditating on the injustice. Meditating on the injustice. You know what? You need to let that go. You know what? You need to say, be positive wherever you are. God can get you wherever you need to go, wherever you are, as long as you're putting him first. And as long as, you know, you're not negative, you know, uh, gravitating towards the negative and just woe with me. You're not going to get anywhere if you just keep rehearsing the bad.